And like for us, we get our hands on like mini DV, yep. high eight tapes, yep. like so like VHS tapes, VHS tapes, yeah. you know, and you like you run all these multiple cables into your VCR. I remember like yeah. recording on mini DV, but yeah. then playing it back, recording to a VHS, and looping in an N sixty four, so I can make sound effects recorded live on like Goldeneye. You know, it's like but it's all like videotape. You know, right. film was like the un, it was that was the, even eight millimeter was yeah. like way out there. You know, so like for me, eight millimeter was seeing it in like actually a bunch of the posters that you guys have mm -hmm. in your offices, like those movies, and like when I was young, not totally understanding what it was, but yeah. knowing like there was a feeling of like, oh, this is like the really grainy film, or this is like the visceral, like yeah. there's a feeling in it, you know, so. I remember being young and my grandparents were still around and I was able to like go over and hang out and you'd help them, you know, do stuff, cut the grass, this or that. And I remember one afternoon I was in the garage just mucking about with some stuff I shouldn't have and there were reels and there was an eight millimeter camera. It was all dirty because it was in the garage and I was just like, wow, this is, I don't know what this is, but this is, this is really cool. And there's like an energy about this. I'm not gonna touch it. Hmm. I'm gonna go cut the grass, but like, cool, I see that. Yeah. You know, so that was one of my first like physical hands-on, like, wow, there's something really special there. I remember being like my parents' home movies too. Like our yeah. home movies, I think were video, but yes. my parents' home movies and my very young home movies were on Super 8, a little projector in like our basement and like that feeling. Like the sound of it, watching it, like the silence of like, also the awkwardness of like you're watching too long family yeah. stuff, but like, <laughs> you know, and like, yeah, that's like, the, which probably ties into winning time actually. This feeling of like, so, so much so, nostalgia. wanting it to feel nostalgic because yeah. it always was nostalgic for us. From my very first conversation with Adam McKay about the, it comes from the script. Like from the, our first conversation, it was like this script. It's obvious that the script is self-referential and kind of sarcastic, and it's also obviously pulling from like real stuff that happened in the period. Like, so we knew that the show was going to bring real archival into play. It was going to we were going to be recreating famous commercials, famous movies, famous uh, press moments from the time period, and also bring in archival photos. So the idea of like mixing formats was in it in its DNA from the beginning. You know, um, I think the Super Eight came up because we wanted a way to blur the line between what was actual archival and what we were recreating, and to see our actors shot in a way that we remember the real famous people looking on either 16 or 8mm or the Ikigami video stuff. So those were like the beginning conversations. I mean, I feel like that's where you came in. We started like figuring out what each format would do. Yeah. And on the pilot, we were also like still, we had our rules, we had our ideas, but I also feel like we were trying it. Like Very much so. Many times we were shooting like a wide shot on the pilot, we'd shoot on 35 millimeter, eight millimeter, and Ikigami. Yep. We didn't know yet like which was gonna feel right. Yeah, yeah, a lot of, I remember the very first text I got from you about this project was like, we have these sort of different formats and we're not really sure exactly, we have obviously ideas, but we're not exactly sure what their home is yet and we want to nurture them, we wanna bring them in and try to try a couple things and uh, see how that works and then have a conversation about it and then let it evolve. And it's funny now going back to that because that became such a thesis for those formats for the entire show. Once we were shooting the show, we had like a, at that point you had designed like a like a bi like a look bible that yeah. kind of described like the different uses for the different styles of eight millimeter. You know, there was like dad cam, which is like the should really I mean it's a camera and a pistol grip and it's just in there, you know, and like. Actually, we did a lot of work to make sure that the camera situation did not become comfortable for you. There yeah. was, we like had built the camera too studioized, and actually the footage was becoming too cinematic yeah. and too clean. Yeah. And we had to make sure to keep the camera in a way where it forced you to like eye focus on your own. It's like kind of difficult to see yeah. through the viewfinder perfectly, and like that gave the footage that feeling of like we were just lucky enough to catch it. You yeah. know? Yeah, I think a lot of it was just embracing the imperfections of the format, and and Definitely. especially as we as we progressed and as I think we got more comfortable with the bravado of what 8mm could do for the show and for the characters, uh, they're well, like anything, we just got more trust and more trust, yeah, more trust. trust with each other, more trust with the format and like you're saying with this stock and having that stock and all these different languages and it was uh, just this beautiful dance that we would in the moment, of course, when we would have conversations in prep or like, you know, this is coming down the pipeline, but so much of what made that energy feel so real was that it was very much built in the moment and it was reactive. I mean, the imperfections and the limitations are what make it so exciting, I think. I mean, there was times where like you're shooting black and white 
on the arena 75 frames a second on these cameras and like it's not it's underexposed you're desperately trying to get as much light as, as you can and you look at the finished image and it's like so beautiful and it's something that we wouldn't have had the i wouldn't have had the courage to expose like that intentionally but it's like those limitations make it feel alive yeah, i think very much so you had to maybe sent me it was like a either a tweet or an instagram but it was a younger someone from Someone younger basically saying, hey, what's up with the iPhone tab at the side of all those shots in winning time? And we're oh like, what God. are they talking about? The and they're perf. talking about the perf. And I was yeah. like, oh, whoa, we're old. We have become old. <laughs> that iPhone tab. That iPhone. And I, I looked at my phone and I was like, oh, it does look like an iPhone tab. It at the does. Top. Like, it's yeah. a perforation. And then someone else under there was like responding like, it's a perforation for a film, you moron. Yeah. And then they got like a fight, you know. Yeah. But I was like, whoa. Yes, yeah. <laughs> the main weapon, if you will, was the Bolio. Uh, it's such a workhorse camera. Yeah. It is going from a cinema background, especially coming up as an assistant, turning it into an operator. And I have the minds of, of an assistant still and uh, ergonomically and where things should be. And uh, that camera allowed you to think mm -hmm. and it would challenge you because it had so many different options to it. So there would be times where we would be, you know, in whatever language we were within, and it would be cool, this would be great in 70 frames. Or like, well, boy, you know, maybe we should stop printing this at four frames, that'd be kind of cool, you know? And then, and we would go, but it was not grab a different body. It was, no, let's just grab the light meter, change a couple things here, and to figure out our exposure. That camera was such a workhorse for us. I don't know, I still feel like a, the same punk kid when we met. I mean, it blows, I'll get like a message on Instagram from like a film student that's like so inspired by the work and it like blows yeah. my mind because I remember being that kid writing to my, yep. D, like the older DPs. And not that we are at that level at all, but like I just remember having that feeling of like, that's like, that's what I want to do. Like that's in my body, you know? And like, it's just crazy to imagine that someone else is having that experience. It's wild. Definitely that because there's been a lot of that, but it's, if I may, I think one of the biggest things between us is um, leading with kindness and creating an environment where people feel safe and they feel trusted and, and that. And so I hope in terms of such a big, profound word like legacy, if you can get remotely close to some version of that, yeah. I, that, I think for us, that would be the ultimate accomplishment.